What's up guys, in this video we're going to introduce MobileNets, a class of lightweight, deep convolutional neural networks that are vastly smaller in size and faster in performance than many other popular models. And we'll see how we can work with MobileNets and code using Keras. So let's get to it. Mobile nets are a class of small, low latency, low power models that can be used for classification, detection, and other common tasks convolutional neural networks are good for. And because of their small size, these are considered great deep learning models to be used on mobile devices. To give a quick comparison in regards to size, the size of the full VGG16 network on disk is about 553 megabytes. The size of one of the currently largest mobile nets is about 17 megabytes. So that's a huge difference, especially when you think about deploying a model to a mobile app or running it in the browser. This vast size difference is due to the number of parameters within these networks. VGG16 has 138 million parameters, while the 17 megabyte mobile net we just mentioned has only 4.2 million. Aside from the size of the networks on disk, the size of the networks in memory is also proportional to the number of parameters. In later videos, we're going to test and demonstrate the performance differences between these models, so stay tuned for that. Now, while mobile nets are faster and smaller than other major networks like VGG16, for example, there is a trade-off, and that trade-off is accuracy. You gotta be kidding me. But wait, don't let that discourage you. Yes, mobile nets typically aren't as accurate as these other large resource heavy models, but they still actually perform very well, with really only a relatively small reduction in accuracy. I've linked to the mobile nets paper in the description that elaborates further on this trade off. Now let's see how we can start working with mobile nets in Keras. We're in our Jupyter notebook, and first things first, we've got all the resources up top that we need to import. And what we're going to do is create a mobile net model and then use it for inference just on a few random images I have to see how well it predicts and classifies these images according to ImageNet classes. Now in Keras, when we make this call to keras.applications.mobilenet.mobilenet as I have here, we're going to obtain a copy of a single pre-trained mobile net model with weights that were saved from being trained on ImageNet images and we're assigning this model to the variable we're calling mobile here. Next, we have this function called prepareImage that accepts an image file and pre-processes the image to get it in a format that the model expects. We'll be passing each of our images to this function before we use MobileNet to predict on them, so let's see what exactly this function is doing. We first define the path to the images, and I have all the sample images we'll be using stored in this relative path in a directory called MobileNet Inference Images. We then call the Keras function image.load, which accepts the image file and a target size for the image, which we're setting to 224 by 224, and that's the default size for MobileNet. And load image is going to return an instance of a pill image. We then convert the pill image into an array with Keras image to array function. And then we expand the dimensions of the array by using NumPy's expand dens. Lastly, we're calling this preprocess input function from Keras.applications.mobilenet, which preprocesses the given image data to be in the same format as the images that MobileNet was originally trained on. Specifically, it's scaling the pixel values in the image between minus one and one and this function will return the pre-processed image data as a NumPy array. Now this result is what we're returning with this overall prepare image function. All right, let's do some predictions and see how MobileNet performs. We'll be using some random images of a few of my favorite things. All right, here is our first image, a lizard. We're going to pre-process this image by passing it to our prepare image function and assigning the result to this pre-processed image variable. We're then having MobileNet predict on this image by calling mobile.predict and passing it our pre-processed image. Then we're using this ImageNet utility function provided by Keras called decode predictions. And it returns the top five ImageNet class predictions with the ImageNet class ID, the class label, and the probability. So basically, we'll be able to see the five ImageNet classes with the highest prediction probabilities 
from our model on this given image. So checking out the results, we have American Chameleon with 76%, then Green Lizard at 12%, Agama at 10%, and a couple other types of lizards at around 1% or less. So this lizard in the image is indeed an American Chameleon, so the model did well at assigning that class the highest probability. And then the remaining four classes are all different types of lizards as well. So overall, I'd say the model did a good job at classifying this one. Let's do another prediction. This time on this delicious looking cup of espresso. We're using the exact same code as we used for the lizard, except now we're pointing to the image of the espresso. And the results for this one are spectacular. The model assigned a 99% probability to the image being espresso, and the remaining four classes with the next highest probabilities are all reasonable as well, with cup, eggnog, coffee mug, and soup bowl. Let's check out another one. This time, we'll be passing an image of a strawberry. Again, same code, new image. And viewing the results, we have another extremely good prediction with a 99.999% probability being assigned to strawberry. So yeah, MobileNet is pretty awesome, don't you think? Yeah. Let me know your thoughts on this model in the comments and also let me know how well MobileNet performs for you using your own images. We'll be continuing to work with MobileNet in the next video where we'll see how we can fine tune the model. I'll see you there.